our tutorial gradient boosting machine regression. Algorithm learning consists of algorithm training within training data subset for optimal parameters estimation and algorithm testing within testing data subset using previously optimized parameters. This corresponds to a supervised regression machine learning tasks. This topic is part of machine training analysis with our course. Feel free to take a look at course curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Gradient boosting machine regression consists of supervised learning meta algorithm for predicting output target feature by boosting of optimally weighted sequentially built decision trees. Boosting is used for simultaneously lowering squared bias error and variance error sources of sequentially built decision trees. For full reference, I recommend that you read Friedman, Greedy Function Approximation, a Gradient Boosting Machine, published in the Annals of Statistics in 2001. Classification and Regression Trees algorithm consists of greedy top-down approach for finding optimal recursive binary node splits by locally minimizing variance at terminal nodes measured through sum of square errors function at each stage. As a formula, we have the minimization of sum of square errors equals to the sum from the first to the last of the difference between output target feature data minus terminal node output target feature mean and that result to the power of 2. Terminal node output target feature mean in turn is equal to 1 divided by m, m is the number of observations in terminal node, multiplied by the sum from the first to the last of the output target feature data. Tree boosting algorithm consists of predicting output target feature of weighted sequentially built decision trees. Gradient descent algorithm consists of finding local optimal weight coefficients of sequentially built decision trees by locally minimizing sum of square errors, sum of absolute errors, or Huber loss function. As a formula, here is an example we have the minimization of the sum of square errors equals to the sum from the first to the last of the difference between the output target feature data minus the sequentially built decision trees weighted output target feature prediction sum and that result to the power of 2. Sequentially built decision trees weighted output target feature prediction sum in turn is equal to the sum from the first to the last, in this case k is the number of sequentially built decision trees, and then we have first of all the learning rate regularization coefficient multiplied by the local optimal sequentially built decision trees weight coefficients, and that is multiplied by sequentially built decision trees output target feature prediction. Great. So let's go into R Studio so that we can study gradient boosting machine regression with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within R Studio. The first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. This is done with the library function and within it the package name. So for this tutorial, we'll be using QuantMod and GBM. So we select these two code lines, we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. The next step is to create data for the gradient boosting machine regression. This is done through data reading. So we create this variable named data, which is equal to read.csv, and within it we have the name of the data file, gradient boosting machine regression data as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values stored within the working directory comma header equals to true. So we select that code line there, click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent, and that creates the data object within the global environment as a data frame. So we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon and it opens the data for us. Within it, we have two columns of data, dates and SPY adjusted. 
SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index and adjust it because this includes adjusted close prices which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And notice we have data with the daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore 9 years of data. So back into the code file, the next step is we are going to create an extensible time series which we're going to name SPY. So as we can see here, SPY equals to that XTS or extensible time series and we're going to select from the previously created data the second column, the one with the adjusted close prices which were adjusted for dividends and splits, order by equals as date with capital D, data the first column, the one with the dates. So we select that code line there and again, click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. And that creates an SPY object, again, within the global environment as an XTS or extensible time series. And we click the spreadsheet kind of icon here. And we can see the data object SPY. And we have the same data as within data, but now the dates became its index. So now that we read our data, we're going to continue to create target and predictor features. So first of all, we have the target feature, which is RSPY. R, because we're going to calculate its daily arithmetic rate of return. So we'll be using daily return function with capital R for uh, SPY. So this is going to calculate, as mentioned previously, the daily arithmetic rate of return of those SPY adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And then we create the target feature after creating the target feature, we create the predictor feature, which is RSPY1. So as target feature, we have current day returns. And as predictor feature, we'll be using previous day's returns. That's why we use lag here for RSPY and K equals to 1. We bring both of this together within one data frame, which we're going to name RSPY all. And we bring them together with C bind or column bind, in which we have RSPY, the target feature, RSPY1, the predictor feature, or current day returns as a target feature and previous day's returns as predictor feature. We rename the column names of this variable with the variable names and notice something important here. When we're la lagging the data, the first observation will be a non-available, so we want to remove that full row of data and we do so with NA exclude of the previously created RSPY all. So we select all these code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. The next step is we're going to do our training and testing ranges delimiting. Training range is commonly used for algorithm training and testing range for algorithm testing to evaluate forecasting accuracy. So we'll create first of all training range RSPYT, T for training range, and then testing range RSPYF, F to distinguish it from the training range. And in both cases, we'll be using window function. So the corresponding training range it's going to be from RSPY all. We're going to select from the beginning of time series, which is 2007, and it's going to end at the beginning of 2014. So we'll be using the first seven years of data as our training range. And for the testing range, again, from RSPY all, we're going to select from the beginning. That's why we have start at the beginning of 2014, all the way to the end of 2015. Therefore, the last two years of data as a testing range. Notice that this training and testing range delimiting was only included for educational purposes Therefore, it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So we're going to select these two code lines, click run or control enter on the keyboard and notice that within this tutorial will only be working within the training range. So now that we have our data ready and the delimiting of training and testing ranges, we're going to continue with grading boosting machine regression. So here, we have the creation of this corresponding object, which is the grading boosting machine or GBM. And notice that we included T because this is done within the training range. And we'll be using GBM function. And first of all, we have the formula which describes the corresponding regression in which we have the target feature RSPY or current day returns being explained by RSPY1, which is the predictor feature or previous day's returns. So here we have distribution equals to Gaussian. So here the corresponding loss function is going to be those least squares. Data, RSPYT as mentioned, we're working now within the training range. Number of trees calculated here is two. So it's going to be a sequential boosting of those sequentially built decision trees. And it's going to be number of trees two. 
Then we have shrinkage equals to 0.1. That's the corresponding learning rate regularization coefficient. And here we have back fraction equals to 1. So that's the training range fraction used for model fit. So we're going to be using the full training range for the model fit when doing those sequentially built decision trees. Very important observation regarding these parameters is that they were only included again for educational purposes as an example. Therefore, they are not fixed and can be modified according to your needs. And then we're going to print from this previously created GBMT its train error. So we're going to select these two code lines here, and then we're going to click Run or Ctrl on the keyboard, which is equivalent. And notice here that it printed the corresponding training error. So as we can see here, we have with just one tree and then with the second sequentially built decision tree. So here is when it built the first tree and then the sequentially built second tree. And as we can see that as the number of sequentially built decision trees increased, the corresponding train error in this specific example decreased. Excellent. So now that we finished studying gradient boosting machine regression, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.